Uh, State Rep. Elgin Rogers here on the Scott Sand Show. Uh, you're running unopposed uh, in, in District 44. Where are the, uh, you're d- changing districts, that whole mess, right? Correct. It's District 42. 42? 42. 42. I'll be representing parts of Toledo, Oregon, Point Place. And uh, I'm leaving the three counties, the two other counties, uh, parts of Wood and Ottawa County that I currently serve in. That's, that's one of the reasons I wanted you to come in today. Of course, I love to see, to see you and have these conversations. Uh, redistricting, gerrymandering on the ballot in November and could be one of the, the most hotly contested issues on the ballot other than obviously maybe the presidency in November. Uh, correct, Scott. Uh, we, we've seen that voters in 2015, they went to the polls and they wanted a system that was more fair and equitable. And that system was implemented. And uh, some of my folks in the legislature, uh, they have not done what the citizens have asked them to do. So the citizens have come back again with another ballot initiative to make sure that uh, politicians are out of the process to make sure that we have fair legislative maps that do not uh, compact, constrict, uh, elongate uh, district boundary lines so that people are disenfranchised or have people representing them that don't have a common connection to them. You know, I, I, I would agree that gerrymandering is a big issue, uh, not just in Ohio. There are other states. You look at Illinois, that's got a bigger gerrymandering problem than we do in, in Ohio. But issue one basically codifies gerrymandering. There are arguments on both sides regarding that, Scott. So some folks say you got to have some form of um, adjusting the margins of the lines to make sure that there's uh, accurate and fair representation. And what this ballot issue is going to do is, is going to make sure that there's representation. I, I, I liken what we have now. Uh, many of you know that it's, I serve. What we have now is screwed up. I mean, well, I, I will admit that. Well, I, I, I liken to what we have now. We have an imbalance. And when there's an imbalance of power, you have extremes on the left and you have extremes on the right. And so what issue one is going to help to do is uh, and the hope is that it's going to help to solve the imbalance so that Ohio can have legislation and legislators who are working in their best interests, who are not far too far extreme uh, either way. Well, let's let's look at this on the, the state house level where you serve. Um, there is an imbalance, perhaps, because the state geographically and perhaps population wise skews more Republican and therefore there should be more Republican members of the state house. Now the congressional maps are a whole other mess, but with the exception of the major population centers like Toledo, Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus, Cleveland, the rest of the state essentially is, is Republican. So there should be more Republican representatives in the state house than Democrats. Well, Scott, I kind of disagree with that. Not kind. I do disagree with that, Scott. So, uh, the word more is, I think, is the, is the word that we have to look at. I think you're correct in what we found in the, in, in the numbers, uh, statistically speaking, that, yes, there will be more Republicans, but there won't be a super majority. There'll be a majority, but not a super majority. And if we go based upon how Ohioans have voted in the last several elections, we see that uh, more and more so that that margin is less than a super majority. So you would have more, those numbers would be more like 54 45 or 55, 44, 55 Republicans, 44 Democrats. Would this be an issue for you and for Democrats if Democrats held that supermajority in the state legislature? Well, I think uh, when, no, I, was, no, when, when I was in graduate school, <laughs> no, no, my professor, be. I had to give him a shout out. His name is Professor Jerry Wright, Indiana University. We got into it because he told me that a legislator, no matter where they come from, what they look like, their ultimate goal is to get reelected. Right. And I argued with him in and in and in and out. Uh, because m- myself, uh, I have legislative uh, responsibilities and duties uh, from the people that I represent. And I want to make sure that I'm doing the best thing. But I-, I-, I hear what Professor Wright is saying about re-election. But there's some legislators, this this ballot initiative that you have, we have the Ohio Legislative Black Caucus, who's in favor uh, of this, who- who's come out to endorse uh, this ballot initiative. And we've seen uh, in other states where a lot of African American um, representatives they go away um, when these when these maps are drawn in this way. So uh, I, I still agree, disagree with and, Professor. And when Democrats Ryan. control the the maps, the, you may get more African American legislators and and more Democrats voting. Well, I'm just going based on the science and based on the historical data that we have for us. However, the maps are drawn, there's going to be some partisan bias in them. That, I, I think that's inherent in the the entire process, which frankly is is somewhat flawed. And I don't know what the solution is. I, I don't expect ordinary citizens to be able to draw a map that accurately represents the political makeup of the state either. I think there are many people who have those same concerns. There are like several different parts to this this ballot initiative. We have judges who are involved and folks to help kind of 
what's the correct word, coordinate the process or be a part of the process to make sure that folks like the, in the legislature who may have a vested interest are somewhat more... Re-election. <laughs> re-election, or more so out of sight of the, uh, uh, the process, the decision-making process when it comes to uh, drawing the maps. Talking to uh, State Rep. Elgin Rogers here on the Scott Sand Show. Uh, you are running unopposed, but you're, you're continuing to go around and you're holding a community forum tonight. Yeah, I have a, a meeting. Uh, there, there's a meet and greet tonight at Point Place Library, 2727 117th Street out in Point Place. If uh, anyone's available, please come on out. Uh, we'd love to meet you and talk with you and talk about some of the issues. There are many hot topics in our state that are taking place. One thing, Scott, I hope that you've been talking to your listeners about our property taxes. Uh, yeah, property tax property tax seems to have been, everybody was screwed, right? I mean, it's a blunt way to put it. Everybody's property tax is going up. Well, don't don't blame it on the folks in our local, uh, Lucas County Auditor's Office or Ottawa County Auditor's Office or the Wood County Auditor's Office or the, uh, the counties that I represent. Um, there's a formula that that's put forward, in, and that's how the, your property taxes are assessed. That's how you're assessed. We need to go back and look at that formula because these things are not fair market value um, these are used for taxing purposes for the most part only. Um, in a lot of communities, and especially in Central City Toledo, there are property values who are going up, and you won't get the price. I'm getting, I'm receiving the calls, and I'm making uh, some attempts to talk with the county auditors. I'm receiving calls from people uh, inside the district that uh, they're not going to get a hundred thousand dollars for the house. That uh, yeah, so the, so the how is that assessment calls. made? What why is this formula, which I, I think has become an outdated formula? Not looking at actual value of the property. Well, they're looking at they're looking at so so what we've had here we've had a um, some somewhat of I don't even know if it's an anomaly, but we've had a, a booming ho- housing market in the mm-hmm. last three years. So every six years, uh, it's they, been a it's been a seller's market. It's been a seller's market. So that's affected the values of the people who live here, and we've had a lot of out of town investors who have come in and, and scooped up properties who are trying to uh, buy even more properties. Right uh, for rental properties or their or their portfolios because the market here is uh is easy to get into for the most part. So those things are affecting folks like myself and those folks who live in this region and in, in, the, in the state of Ohio. And we've seen it uh, again and time and time and again. So uh, these are things that the legislature should be looking at. These are things that are affecting everyday people, our seniors. Uh, we keep looking at ways to increase the homestead tax credit for seniors. Um, we're also looking at ways to make sure that the property tax burden does not push seniors out of their homes. These are the conversations that I'm interested in having and that we should be having, uh, not just here and regionally, but statewide. I mean, it's a serious concern that some some homeowners could be forced out of their home if they're unable to pay the, the property taxes, which have gone up. In some cases, I've heard 30 to 40 percent. That's correct. So, so what, what can you do and how quickly can you do it from the state legislative perspective? Well, from the from the, legis- the first thing folks should do is not ignore the notices that they're receiving from your county auditor about that's, the proposed value. That's that's what I do every time I get a bill oh. I can't pay in. I just ignore it. I, I put it in the, put it in the folder you, and, and, and you, ignore it. Is you, that not the best way to do it? You, you can't ignore it because you you've elected the county auditor maybe for have, a bourbon or something. That is not the best way to handle a bill. <laughs> Yeah, uh, some some bills you may want, you may need a bourbon, and this is one of them. Uh, but you want to reach out to your county auditor's office, and you want to share with them that you believe well what you believe the, the, the proposed value is. You want to have a discussion. How did they arrive to that number? Because they need the feedback. So the county auditor does, uh, uh, does the does the work. And then they have to send these values down to the Ohio Department of Taxation, who certifies these things. And there's a there's a discussion. There's a debate. It's almost like uh, buying a house and. And I'm very, I'm simplifying this. It's almost like buying a house with a negotiation process. And so those values come back to the county auditor. So we would ask that those folks who uh, see their values and think something's off or something's shaky, reach out to your county auditor. Those folks are here to help you. You pay their salaries. I worked in the county auditor's office for almost 10 years in the real estate division and weights and measures and all other parts of that, um, that, that office. So you have great staff there who want to help you. So make sure that you reach out to the county, Lucas County Auditor's Office or Ottawa County Auditor's Office or the Wood County Auditor's Office. Yeah, this this seems like something that would be bipartisan in Columbus. It depends, right? Bipartisan, <laughs> it, it, it's bipartisan in many ways. It is because I have to give a shout out to my Wood County, uh, my Wood County Auditor, and also my Ottawa County Auditor, uh, Auditor Whitmer from uh, Ottawa County. Because she and I teamed up together because they wanted to kick the can down the road. So the... the uh, Shocked. Shocked, I say. Well, yeah, shocked. And uh, she stepped in and gave uh, excellent witness testimony. 
uh, regarding if you were to kick the can down the road and freeze these values for three years from now, now that 30 doesn't look like 30. It looks like 50 to 60. And then there's an actual bill that comes behind that. Mm -hmm. And uh, her county, Ottawa County, uh, often sees because of the um, tour season, they often see an increase in values, people buying properties uh, in Ottawa yeah, County. Sense. Yeah. Uh, State Rep. Elgin Rogers here on the Scott Sancho again. Tell everybody how they can meet with you tonight for the community forum. And you got one next week uh, as well, I believe. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, tonight, we're at uh, the Point Place Library, 2727, 117th Street in Point Place. That's from 6 o'clock to 730. And then tomorrow, we're at Mott Branch Library on Door Street in Central Toledo. Uh, thanks for coming by, man. And good they're to both see at 6 o'clock. Good to see you too, Scott. It's always nice. You can come by anytime. Oh, Scott, I appreciate that, Scott. You, you... Is that it? Go, go ahead. Finish your thought. Scott, no, I just want to say thanks for uh, the work that you're doing. It's Appreciate important to educate folks. Appreciate that. Yeah.